All right, back to back videos, right? This is my this is my second video. I just blogged something else that was quite extreme. What order I'm going to post everything, I don't know. It's just the way I feel and when I get inspired to do what I do. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Um, we're going to get into today's topic. All right. Several people have been blogging, posting, and, you know, continuing, as I call it, the saga with this Eddie Long business. Now, I refrained from addressing this and making a video simply because um, when this whole talk show thing and all this started for me, I did a segment on Tatra Bet, which was a whole hour and some change where we talked about um, the gospel music industry and church and how people make these figures um, to be some kind of super saint or super power and that they don't fall or make mistakes when they're wrapped up and coated in flesh just like you are and um, just like the word of God says for all ALL have sinned and come short of the glory of God so everybody makes mistakes every last one of us and that includes me so none of us is perfect none of us I don't hide behind Jesus and all of that I just not understand and I got some extreme issues that I need to work on in my life and I accept that I don't um, try to m paint a picture make up a funk or uh, anything for my shortcomings I just ask that God give me grace that I get through them um, and that's just be it um, when it comes to other people and their perception of your issues and what you do, that that's just makes it all the more the worse because I don't feel like I have to live in defense of nothing. And I definitely don't feel like that I have to answer to strangers too. Um, and I definitely don't feel like uh, I have to defend anything that somebody says. When you know how you live at the end of the day, what does it matter what somebody else is questioning concerning you or what somebody else got to say really truthfully I know how I live so I'm not moved nor am I worried about somebody else's opinion feel me on that cuz I'm, I'm quite sure that some of you might not feel me but still I said what I said now getting into this whole um, Eddie Long issue they just released the statement that Eddie Long will be settling out of court. That's right. And if you know anything about any legal matters and concerns or what have you, you know that people usually do not settle out of court unless, unless there is some guilty stain somewhere within the whole suit. So if I could say it like this, um, Usually when people go come to those terms, they know that they are at fault. So before you drag me through court and this becomes a wicked mess, let me just get myself straight and admit, okay, look, we, we know that we done exchanged some faults or I, I have either did some things here or there and this is why this whole suit is arising to start with. So, you know, let's just peaceably end this without doing it with the publicity and with court and etc cetera, etc cetera. so I believe that that's the route that this is going for whatever reasons and I'm quite sure that Mr. Long at this point would love to say that he's doing it so that he does not drag his ministry through that and that he doesn't drag his family through that experience and what have you um, and that that is his choice if that's what he's doing whether people like that or not that is that man's choice um, second um, to all of this um, it's obvious that there's some truth to whatever has been said you know people amp or um, uh, people put drama on a pedestal they don't care whether it's true or not the fact that it's said they just love it they eat it up and I just believe that um, on a personal level that people have been waiting basically for something on him for the longest and it's no secret I mean if if I was to give a synopsis on these alleged accusations 
against Mr. Long, I would say, um, from my own personal observation of him and his ministry, and yes, I'm stating, this is how I feel, and this is my observation. Um, me being in ministry myself, there's some things that I was just taught, you just don't do. Um, and everybody, yes, is an individual that brings their style and their flavor and their this and their that to the forefront of whatever category or field of ministry that they're in, blah, blah, blah. But um, for years, his imagery that he portrays has been seductive and provocative. It's not seductive for me because I don't find none of that attractive. But for other people who already are weak, that was like a, um, a bait that drew them in to his whole imagery, this built, macho, robust man. And yes, he may be well into being a fitness guru or whatever you want to call that, a fitness freak and just love to take care of himself and take care of his body. That may all be true. That very well may all be true. But there's, like Ecclesiastes says, a time and a place and a season and all of that for everything. And the pulpit is not the place for that. I mean, if you go back from Old Testament into New, there's a reason why we were um, asked to dress a certain way when entering the temple. Or that priest was, if nobody else, you know, because we hide behind this come as you are thing or whatever. Okay, whatever. Um, that's for the people. But for the priests, there is a requirement. So when you get up into leadership status and different different things, I believe that there are reasons why the priests of the temple were asked to dress a certain way and etc. Am I saying that we're supposed to walk around in robes every day, all day? No. But what I am saying that there was reasons, there were standards for that. And so that's just to say in that aspect of the dress and the provocativeness um, and the lust and the alluring spirit that he exudes when he ministers. Yes, every preacher brings their personality um, to the forefront when they're doing what they do, but that just says something, if not to nobody else, but to me. Um, he just brought who he was to the forefront. He just brought who he was to the front, for forefront for everyone to see. And I believe that that's just what took place. And what makes it all believable at the end of it all is that these people were not just average members of his church or just people that was that just know him or uh, one of the hundreds. They weren't just one of the hundreds of ministers or staff members or whoever that was there, but these were people who were close to him. And if anything there is about betrayal that becomes the truth is that people believe, are quicker to believe those who were closest to you. So if you're just an associate or just someone who's among the number, nobody's going to really listen to all that. They may hear it, but they're not going to listen to all that. What makes it all believable is the fact that these people was extremely close, living in one of his homes, if not in his home, or um, going on trips with him and spending other time that other staff members and other family members or other members of the church don't even have the privilege to do. So that's what makes it all believable when something like this comes out. Second um, is that this is my last and final statement on this whole issue is that um, what man did you know is going to publicly um, bring someone to the f carpet, to the floor, on molesting or raping them. Nobody's going to do that. Most people who actually experience that never even talk about it or never tell nobody or it's shameful for them or hide it or they, not, they don't discuss it or some of them may not even ever discuss it until years later when they're actually able to finally deal with it. And for some people it takes them their whole life. So let's consider and think about that, that nobody's just going to bring no type of accusation against nobody like that. And it not be true in some frame. So people can say what they want to say, the truth, that this is the season for the naked truth. And I don't believe that um, this is the end.
concerning not just concerning scandals like these but I think that um, anything that gets us exposed is because you have had your time and your season to get those things correct and when you don't do those things I don't care whether preacher or non preacher whatever point or season you're at in your life God gives every man grace he as the scripture says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust so even, even for the unjust and whatever wrong it may not be that you're a molester or that you are uh, have a lust of flesh problem or that you're a pedophile it may not be that for you but it may be some other areas of your life that you steal that you lie that you are a gossiper that you do various whatever sin of your choice is that you cheat on your wife or that you cheat on whoever you call yourself to be with whatever God reigns on the just as well as the unjust both with blessings and grace and mercy so with all that being said there's a period and a time where God gives every man to get themselves together. And then there comes a period of the time when that exposure comes. Or where basically God just lets you get out there where people can say, you know what? You're wrong. And it may look like that whole person's world and everything is on the line and coming down. And truth be told, sometimes it's challenging and it is just that. But... To wrap it up in a nutshell, um, nobody's nobody in their right mind should be happy about this Eddie Long situation. Not nobody from the church, at least. Nobody in their right mind should be happy about something like this happening. But what this what this does is causes the church now to address it, because that's something that the church does not do: address problems such as this. And it is an issue. It is a deep issue always has been a deep issue but what do we do cover it all up pray and say God gonna handle it no you handle it because you're the one dealing with this so let's come to terms on what what's going on what the truth is just like we do with anything else it's funny we can have conferences and all that stuff for everything else but this We write books and issues and we, we promote everything else but address this. So I've said all that I can say. Hit me with your comments. Hit me with your thoughts. Some of you going to like what I had to say and some of you not. So hey, to each his own. And remember, if the need is great, what I always say, then the subject is worthy. So if you find yourself offended by anything that I had to say, then God bless you and God speed be to you. <laughs> I'm not here to, um, to please everyone and to make everybody happy, but I just said my piece and that's what I do. Help you. So um, thank you for watching. Hit me in the comment section. Michael London TV on Twitter. Michael London TV on Model Run. Um, I'm on Facebook, The Michael London Show, and basically just check all my links out at the bottom of this video, and the last link that I'm going to give you is to my website, and I need each and every one of you to join and support. www.michaellondon.webs.com Peace. Much love.